Hello, hi, and welcome to Empathic Fire. I am your reader, Jay. Whoa, these are going to be general messages for the sign of Capricorn in October 2020. What is going on, Capricorn? How are you guys doing? I hope that you are doing well. All right, Capricorn, welcome to October. Happy Halloween if you're going to be celebrating at the end of the month. Uh, if you're going out, if you're, if you're going to parties, taking kids trick-or-treating or whatever you're doing, please be safe, you know, be cautious. It's still a pandemic out there. And because of that pandemic, I hope that you are safe happy, healthy, and secure at this time. Please continue to take very good care of yourselves and those that you know and love. Let's all keep each other safe and come on, guys. <laughs> let's try Let's try and, uh, you know, maybe change the tide for 2021, right? Uh, anyway, Capricorn, uh, wherever you are in the world, again, I hope you're happy, safe, and healthy. Um, let's go ahead and get into it. Uh, anything that you want from me, Capricorn, it is already in the description box below. If you want the timestamp, it is down there. Information on how to purchase a personal reading with me, it is also down there. If you have a question before you place an order, just email me at the same address that you see provided there, and I will answer you as soon as I can. If you're interested in doing donations to the channel, you can feel free to use either the Cash app or the PayPal app uh, link below. And if you want to follow me on Instagram, the uh, the link for that is also in the description box, okay, for Empathic Fire Tarot over on Instagram okay all right let's go ahead and get into it I want to see the outcome <clears throat> excuse me for Capricorn in October 2020 Capricorn's outcome in October 2020 please show me Wow, interesting. All these came out fairly easily, but here we are. Show me or stop me for the Capricorn's outcome. There we go, thank you. Bottom of the deck is the overall energy. Finally got there, eh? All right. Let's go ahead and flip the cane face down for you. All right. Try and make it look a little nice and neat before we get things going. All right, not too bad. All right, Capricorn, let's see what's happening. Please show me where Capricorn is in October 2020. <clears throat> Capricorn in October 2020, please show me. All right, we got it. Okay, good. That was a little mysterious feeling. I don't know why. That's strange. Um, anyway, Capricorn coming in to October. You come in with the energy of the King of Wands. All right, fire sign energy, Aries, Leo, Sagittarius. You could be dealing with a, a, a fire sign or not at all. It's a general, uh, so this could be you or it could be flipped. But uh, this person here, they mean business, they're very strong, they're very uh, assured or astute. Um, I feel they have a lot of technical expertise, like these tools uh, that this king is holding and this little tool belt on the floor there, it's like really like this is a skillful person, like they have a trade that they're very good in or like they're a master of, they could be in a union, a trade union or something like that. Um, or there's just like a certain uh, knowledge or skill set in a non-technical way that this person is very um, masterful of. Could be very crafty, could be very like creative, like um, this person could do like work with like silicone or ceramics or any other type of textile or art, uh, something like that. So this person is very, again, creative. And in many cases, they're gonna use their hands in their creation or in their work, okay? Um, and it doesn't have to be their primary work. They're letting me know that like this person could have like a side hobby and that side hobby looks like it's like their full time job. And they're like, no, I just do this on the weekends. And it's just like, what? Like, <laughs> like maybe this person like makes bird houses or cuckoo clocks or something. And like they do it and they've got like a hundred cuckoo clocks in their house. And they're like, when did you make all this? Oh, on the weekends for the past five years. 
what? <laughs> so this person is very busy with 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 their creative side uh, or their or their creative visions or their inspiration. This person um, gets a lot out of that work, even if it's not for monetary gain, even if it's not for notoriety. They just feel satisfied when they're doing something with their hands or they're doing something with their skill set. If they're like, you know, a genius in trigonometry, which I never took because I don't know math and science. I'm really bad at it. Um, but let's say like they just have a brain for mathematics. This person might literally like buy books or like go on websites like that give out like math problems for fun. I'm sure it exists. I wouldn't be visiting those websites, but this person might do that. You see what I mean? So they get a lot of pleasure out of the things that make them feel creative or allow them to kind of flex their brain muscles, which is very interesting because the King of Wands, I don't think is known. I wouldn't think many people would equate this person to being an intellectual, but because this is a general collective, right? Uh, it's not all of them are creative in those, you know, artistic ways, or they're not always creative with their hands. Some of them are very creative with their minds, or they have like expansive thought, uh, very, very um, rapid thought in some cases. Uh, this person could be a savant, right? Um, I don't know why they're here, because I'm just talking about who they are. I don't know how you feel about this person, or I don't know how people are reacting to you. Um, but this is kind of the vibe of the of, of the person at this moment, male or female, fire sign or not, uh, very much expressing themselves or finding pleasure in those creative endeavors. Let's say it that way. If they're not expressing it, if they're not doing it for anybody other than themselves, it's just like something, to, possibly something to pass the time, right? Because I mean, <laughs> like I was saying in the beginning, 2020 you know, shout out to coronavirus has really put people on, you know, I mean, I don't know about you and I don't know, you know, I don't watch the news faithfully. Like I watch it like once a day during the work day and that's it. Um, but I've seen enough stories where people are turning to creative hobbies uh, and like stores are running out of like supplies for that. Like I think, oh, what was like one of the first things? Shit, I can't remember. But like, I, I remember hearing like certain retail stores are like running low on certain supplies that were normally like not a big pull, but because so many people are out of work or working from home or they have so much more downtime, like people are turning to, oh, that's what it was. Uh, and this is this is not exact. I mean, th this person could be doing this, but it was jigsaw puzzles. I remember there was a story several months ago about jigsaw puzzles. You know, <laughs> when I was growing up, me and my grandmother, we would play, we would play, we would do jigsaw puzzles because that was her hobby. And I'm just like, I'm, I guess I'm helping, you know, but jigsaw puzzles aren't, you know, when you go to the toy store or when you go to that section in Walmart, it's not like it's the busiest, but <laughs> because everybody's at home, all of a sudden jigsaw puzzles are flying off the shelves, right? So there's something about in this time period or in the certain circumstances that you or someone else finds themselves in, that creative side is like overflowing. Maybe it needs an outlet. Maybe that's what this is. That's interesting. Um, so what else happens? Because I don't really, I don't really know why this person has showed up or that's your starting point, but I guess we'll figure it out. So what else happens for Capricorn? Please show me. Yes. Oh, okay. <laughs> that makes sense. This has happened because of, yes, fallouts. <laughs> Um, this has happened because, or this person is in this mood, in this, in this position, in this headspace, in this feeling, they're, they're, they're doing all this stuff to kind of, um, compensate for what they have experienced recently. Thank you. That's right. Okay. So I think in many cases it is in response to the different ways possibly 2020 has really been, been such a turbulent year for practically everybody on earth or at least a high majority of people right in some form or fashion we've all been affected by what's been going on outside of our doors right uh some of us more severely than others i feel whoever this is they're trying to keep themselves held together trying to you know keep themselves anchored keep themselves grounded keep themselves sane through what i was talking about those creative endeavors those projects that that you know <laughs> just doing math problems because it's fun whatever they're into because Otherwise, they they would be feeling a different way. So uh, in some cases, this has been a hard hit. Yes, thank you. Hard hit on the family front or on the home front. Four of Wands. 
Uh, this is, I, this deck, and, you know, I just choose these decks at, well, I don't choose them at random, I choose them with my guide's help, and in this particular deck, this Four of Wands looks a mess. Four of Wands is talking about home life, stability, uh, happy families in some cases, or at least happy unions, right? And it doesn't have to be between a, uh, a man and a woman or, or in a romantic sense. You could be living with your best friend Sally, and, you know, you guys have been best friends since you guys went to, you know, <laughs> uh, <laughs> an all-girls school together in fifth grade, whatever. The quality of the relationship or the type of relationship is not really what's important. It's important that it's shared space, shared energy, effort, and, and, and desire or intention, right? And so what do we see here, though? A goddamn mess. <laughs> so uh, some of you Capricorns have had a total upheaval to your home life, maybe. Um, if you live with your family or you live with roommates or whoever, you know, normally everybody's going and they've got their own day to take care of, you know, pre-corona times, right? Uh, now that 2020 has come along, everybody's at home. Everything's a mess constantly. There's always dishes in the sink. There are socks in all the rooms. How and why are there socks in the freaking kitchen? But there are, you know, <laughs> it's just like things are displaced, things are seemingly dysfunctional or haphazard, right? Um, that is upsetting to someone's peace of mind. I'm assuming it would be you since this is your reading Capricorn, but it can be flipped because it still is general. So the disarray to f home life um, is really, really, really uh, disturbing someone's peace. Like there are people like this. I can be that way some way, but I'm, I really cannot relate personally but there are some people my sister's one uh where they will go to sleep at night and they can't sleep well or they don't feel ready for bed because they know there's a mess in the kitchen the dishes were left in the sink or there are dishes that need to be put away or there's clothes in the in, in the in the laundry basket that need to be folded the vacuuming didn't get done oh and it's just like it it it, it stresses them out so i'm feeling like the uncleanliness or the unkeptness kempness or just the busyness of the home space with everybody being home more days than not more hours in the day than not it is stressing someone the fuck out um there it is thank you there we go so this king of wands person again could be you could be someone that you're dealing with um they need a lot of them time or they need a, they need an off uh, an, an, an outlet thank you they need an outlet they need something to do that will distract them from the mess that is going on in the place that they live or the place that they spend the most time. This could be as a stretch because it's tarot and this is, again, mostly about home life. This could be someone stressed when they go to work because, you know, there are people who are going to their workplaces, uh, people in the service industry, people in the healthcare industry, people in, in retail who are now back out there dealing with the public, dealing with clients on a, on a, on a, on a physical face-to-face uh, -face basis and that could be stressful because as I have seen as I've gone out for example to the grocery store if one or two cashiers can't make it to work because of whatever reason maybe you know god forbid they were diagnosed with the, with the virus or maybe they are helping a family member we don't know the reasoning doesn't matter but any time in a public service space where you don't have enough staff that creates long lines that creates a lot of uh, uh, stress and anxiety for the people, the public that you serve, and the people that are actually on staff to take care of. So you've got people, I don't know about where you live, uh, but for example with me, you've got people who are doing the cashier business, who are checking people out, you know, running the groceries over the scanner, who don't work the front end of the store. They work in the bakery, or they work in seafood, or they work, you know, they stock, stock, they work in the stock room, but they have to come to the front of the store to get customers processed out of the store. That is stressful. That is unfamiliar to both the person doing the service and the people who are, you know, and that's the other thing. <laughs> I don't know if this is you, or I don't know if you've been around people like this, um, but I guess there would be a reason to mention it. I personally, Number one, having worked in service and retail and stuff before, I would never chew someone out, but I've seen enough of it. And I'm sure many of us have seen enough of it either in real life or we've seen clips on, on the internet where people are chewing out workers in the middle of them trying to help you and not being sympathetic that that person, number one, is a fucking person and they may not, you know, be having the greatest of days. 
And you don't know, you know, I don't want to get all into it, but like that infuriates me. And it really, really bothers me when I see someone being highly critical of someone just trying to do their job, trying to do their job to the best of their ability. And without knowing the context, without knowing why that person is in that position, why that person is possibly not doing what you think they should be doing, regardless of that, there's just like this attack that happens sometimes. So that could be what's going on. And again, that's a stretch for the Four of Wands. Because again, the Four of Wands is really mostly dealing with home or places that you go for rest and respite. It could factor into your job because it also talks to foundations and we go to our jobs, our careers, because we need money to live, right? So that, that could be a stretch. However, regardless of where we're talking, there's a disarray going on in those spaces and it is causing a person to spend a lot of time either on their own or spend a lot of dedicated time to doing things that they enjoy that, again, act as an outlet for them because they need to keep themselves stable. Because that's the other purpose of the Four of Wands is to create or sustain stability, okay? Um, if it's very internal, what do I mean by that? Oh, <laughs> if it's very internal. If it's like very in the house, like kids are home, <laughs> you know, maybe you've got like a, a an extended, or, or, excuse, extended, a, um, a relative, uh, an extended family member, thank you, living with you like a auntie or a cousin or something like that. And if everybody's home all the time and everybody's like on top of one another, everybody's always like, you know, the internet is so slow because everybody's using it at the same time, whatever. Uh, that's that's a different type of headache and I think that's where many of you are not all of you but many of you are in that space you feel claustrophobic thank you you're feeling like like sardines in a can like there's no room to breathe so maybe that's why king of wands whoever it is maybe they've got like a whole little studio or like a space in the basement or the garage where they can just go and build those cuckoo clocks like I don't even <laughs> I, you know but that's what the mm-hmm mm-hmm that's what this feels like. And it's building or it built up to a certain point. It's going to go two ways. Some of you are living this. Some of you, this is like sort of like recent past. Um, so I think mm -hmm, King of Wands energy is a little detached. Nine of Cups, little detached like as noble and as ad admirable I think it is to have certain hobbies that you can dedicate so much time to and put so much emphasis on and really create some beautiful you know uh, things that you know like like novelties or things that are useful or you're just exercising your brain I think that's all great for the individual but I think it comes at a price I think this person might be Again, for their sanity from where they're standing, this is what I have to do to make myself feel good. This is what I have to do to kind of alleviate the stress of the day. This is what I have to do in order to make it so that I don't come into the room and like rip everybody's heads off. I, you know, I just gotta, I gotta have like, you know, an hour to myself every day to just do something. And that's a bargain or a compromise, but I also feel it's a little detached. Or at least that's how it's being perceived. Thank you. That's how it's being perceived from other people as a, as a, as a detachment, as as sort of being cold. And that's not typical of the Nine of Cups, but because of this deck and because of this artwork, look what we see here. We see this woman <laughs> snuggled up in her little snuggie. They still make those probably, I think. But anyway, <laughs> more like a blanket. And she's got her ammo and she's just, she looks pretty content. What is that, a radio or something? Yeah, she got her little radio down there. So she's like, and again, this is the zombie tarot deck. So like the premise is this is a zombie apocalypse that's taking over the earth, right? And so this woman in her bunker, in her, because you see the background, it's like she's in a bunker. She's in like some, because you see like the, uh, not the furnace, we call it the, the, the hot water heater, right? She's in a basement, but she's dreaming, escaping in her mind to an island, Right? In her mind, things are better than her reality, which is sitting in the basement, shotgun in hand, waiting for her demise. You know what I mean? And some of, okay, this is not a joke because some people are feeling that that thing. Some people are feeling like things will never go back to normal. 
some people are thinking this is literally the beginning of the end, okay? Um, I, I have, <laughs> I disagree is, is what I'll say. I'll di I, I personally disagree, but I allow and I understand that people would have their convictions or have their feelings uh, that sort of make them believe that, okay? That, <sighs> I don't want to say it's extremist because I don't want to single those people out because I don't think that's the majority of the energy you're dealing with, Capricorn. But there is like this self-preservation thing going on. And again, that feels detached in the eyes of other people. Even though, like the word says, self-preservation. Without it, without escaping for an hour or two a day, to do your own thing, to get some peace and quiet, to exercise your brain, to work on a hobby, to do your side business, whatever you're doing, without doing that, the consequences would be worse, is what that feels like. However, again, someone else's perception on the outside of whoever the King of Wands is, I think the King of Wands and the Nine of Cups are the same person, right? So outside of whoever this person is, it looks like an escape act. It looks like you're being selfish. It looks like you don't care about everything that's going on in the house or everything that's going on in the business or everything that's going on, you know, we're understaffed. You know what I mean? So it's, it could be something like that. Let's use that just as an example. Let's say you do work in a, a particular job and people are calling out and you need to, you need to be called in for coverage and you say no, even though people are saying, we'll pay you double, you'll get, you'll get hazard pay. This is going to go towards this. We'll give you, you know, all the benefits of like asking you to come in. And of course you would be doing the, 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 the company or the, your boss a favor. Someone says no for their mental health, for their emotional health, for their own sanity. They say, no, I'm not coming in for that coverage. It looks selfish or it seems, it seems like you're, you're shitting on a good thing in that particular situation, in that, in that particular uh, example, right? It, 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 it's coming off as you're saying no to money, you're saying no to more hours when if this was a normal time, if this was pre-corona, you would be craving for hours, you'd be calling up and saying, hey, can I pick up an extra shift? Or hey, do you have any work going today? Now that, now that you're being asked, you say no. It's like, why? Because someone is, is not, they know themselves. Whoever this person is, going back to the King of Wands a little bit, and again, it's helped by the Nine of Cups. This person knows their limits, right? They know that if I were to take on more work, if I were to spend more time in this room seeing the mess that I see, I'd go fucking ape shit. They know this. As a king of wands, they have that pot Yes, what's next to it? I see it. Got you. They have the potential to fucking explode. Period. Period. Whether that's right or wrong, they know their temp- mm, They know their temperament. Okay? So I applaud that, even though I think on the outside, it doesn't- feel or look fair. That's all subjective though, right? And what was I saying before? Just a, it, it, please correlate these two things. What I was saying before about the cashier who is slow or, you know, long lines and people being irritable and then taking it out on the, on the people in the store, right? Amongst other things that people are taking it out on, on, on workers for, right? There's this lack of empathy, a lack of sympathy and compassion for what the other person is going through and or where they're coming from. Same thing here. Even in your home with your friends and your family, the people you, you cohabitate with, be sympathetic, be empathetic. Understand that you might think, you know, a dishwasher full of dirty dishes that doesn't get started overnight is no big deal. I'll wake up tomorrow and I'll start the dishes in the morning. You might think it's no big deal. To somebody else, that eight hour window, that 10 hour window or whatever where the dishes aren't being cleaned overnight is anxiety inducing. It, and it sounds, it sounds trivial, it sounds arbitrary, it sounds stupid to somebody else. But for the person who experiences it, who has this issue or who has this, this uh, provocation, not provocation, but a, a disposition, where they sleep better, they feel less anxious, they feel more accomplished because things are in their proper place and things are kind of following a certain schedule or they're able to kind of go into a room and not see disarray, that helps them feel better. For other people who are not affected by their surroundings in those ways, it doesn't make sense. So this is feeling like a clash of personality types. This is feeling like a misunderstanding of 
each person's individual subjective experience, which is kind of one of the big biggest problems of, 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 of our incarnation here in this place. Sub subjectivity is whatever, I'm not going to get into it. But anyway, so what I was saying was judgment or what I was not what I was saying, but the image of this coming next to the King of Wands, I feel that possibly also uh, the King of Wands, whoever it may be, Capricorn, you or somebody else, I feel like your energy is sort of 50 50. I feel like some of you are the King of Wands and others of you you're dealing with the King of Wands. Excuse me. And so I feel like this person recognizes they have the ability to kind of flip their lid. Not that they would want to. That's the thing. I feel that this person is actively trying to avoid this moment, actively trying not to get to this turning point. What do we see with the judgment card, especially in this deck? Bombs dropping, right? Um, in traditional uh, depictions of this card, it's like an angel above a cemetery and like, you know, bodies or souls are coming out of the grave for resurrection. Uh, and that's the thing about judgment in, in innately it is about resurrection it is about sort of going back to and restarting or or, or reconciling something yeah um and that that's possible here but because of this artwork in this particular deck i feel that this person doesn't even want to have to create a situation or be part of a situation where things would need to be reconciled right uh basically what was that called not damage control what's that called preventative action sort of Pardon me, my God. Um, preventative action. Like, again, it seems selfish to somebody else that one person kind of gets to have time to themselves. Like, maybe it's that. Like, maybe, like, let's say it was this. Let's, let's use an example. Let's say this is a, a family domestic situation, you know, parents and children, right? the tra the quote unquote traditional family home right one parent feels let's say it's the husband right the husband feels and again it doesn't have to be man and woman it could be two men two women 15 people i don't care who lives there right but let's say the husband knows that the wife likes to do whatever she does she's got a she shed she's got a she's got a hobby maybe she's got like a youtube channel she does whatever and then she does it by herself and in that time He's in charge. He has to clean the house, take care of the kids. Anything that goes on in that domestic space, he's the captain. He's he's the anchor at, you know, between 5 and 6 every day, 5 and 7.30 every day. She's off doing something else, right? I feel that the husband or that, that partner who takes up the slack within those fixed hours feels like slighted they feel in not insulted and maybe not so maybe not slighted but they feel like they feel some kind of way like you're off doing your your little cuckoo clock making or you're off doing this with your youtube or you're off doing this uh and it could be something it doesn't even have to be creative like you know the, uh, another aspect of the wands is physical activity so this could be now that gyms are back open after a long time and people can go back and you know start going to their personal trainers and doing whatever now maybe somebody's back on their fitness routine but the children are still home all day or the or this needs to be taken care of or all the work that was put into the office is back at the house. So it's like uh, somebody just feels you going and doing your thing is really stressful to me. How come I can't do these things or how come it's always when you want to do it like it's something like that. Someone's upset about this. Not understanding that without those outlets, without that time away king of wands could explode i don't want to make this like a i don't know who's quote unquote right or wrong in the situation because i don't know the details and it's not me it's not my life it's your life right but it feels like two people think that the way they're going about things is right like me asking you if, if this is the husband who takes the hour to do the cuckoo clock making i don't know what the fuck i'm doing with this cuckoo clock but whatever <laughs> so let's say it's that he feels like this is this is fair because I'm there all the other hours and I'm there any other time. So like this one thing that I'm asking for a, a couple of hours uh, within the day or or like one hour in the day, 
to just do what I want to do and relax and, 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 and de-stress, what's wrong with that? Maybe the issue, aha, uh-huh, okay. And this would be typical in, in many domestic situations is like, well, you, you're doing your thing, but I'm not doing my thing. Like I'm sacrificing my hobbies. I'm sacrificing my outlets. I'm not going to the gym. You know I want to go to the gym, but I'm not going to the gym because somebody has to be here with the kids. Something like that. So how come you get to go and I, and I have to stay here and hold the bag is kind of what this feels like. It's a, it's a little, I don't want to say it's petty because I think it's, yes, it runs deeper than that. It runs deeper than that. This is, this is possibly symptomatic of deeper issues. This is a symptom or, or, or a manifestation of deeper issues in certain relationships or certain domestic spaces or certain workplace drama. This is deeper than that. But the, the nitpicky thing is you are making cuckoo clocks. Why? Maybe that's it. Maybe there's like a, 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 a skepticism or, or a criticism over what the, what the hobby is. Like, what did I say earlier? Jigsaw puzzles? Like, I, I like to somebody else, like jigsaw puzzles or cuckoo clocks are bullshit. You're wasting your time. You could be doing something more constructive. Or you could, I could be using that time to do something else, but instead you get to use that time. It's, it's, it's kind of petty. It's, it's a little petty. But I feel really... Whoever is either demanding or carving out that time, they really know that if they didn't have it, they might explode. And I don't know that that's a good thing, or I don't know if that's an excuse, but that's, that's, that's their mindset, Capricorn. That's your mindset or theirs. It's the mindset of the person. If I didn't do this, things would be a whole lot worse. Okay? Yeah. So... I feel mm. Wow, I suddenly got really tired. Okay, that makes sense. Yeah. So this is draining. Yeah, this is draining on you guys. I feel it's draining and you don't really know what to do about it, right? I feel this Nine of Swords feels really exacerbated. I feel it, I feel you feel really stretched thin, pushed to your limits type of thing. There's only, there's only so much more you can take or this person feels this way if it's not you, right? And there's only so much more that can that can go on in this situation before things take a turn or things become irreversibly damaged oh okay so this is twice uh because you see this this is like a nurse and a patient and i know what's down here there's like this syringe so for some of you it could be like medical right it could be that the stress and the anxiety and just the whole thing is taking a toll on someone's physical health, their mental health, their emotional health, and they're afraid that it'll get to a point where we can't undo the damage, right? So I don't know if you have predispositions to certain diseases or conditions. I don't know if you have, like I said before about the working situation, if you pick up all these hours or you're working more or you're exposed to the public more or you're going out of your house and you're not being able to isolate as much, you might have a concern over contracting the virus. Now, this is like one of the first times I've talked about in all of 2020 so directly that someone is afraid of contracting the virus. You might feel and know you were exposed to someone who tested positive, right? And you're worried about that. Like, look at this guy. Look how anxious and worried he is. He's just like, oh no, what am I, what's going on? Da da da. You know, so there's, there's in some of your cases, a very acute, very plausible and valid reason for being concerned about contracting. It's not just paranoia, like you, again, in your work, in your dealings with other people, the public going out and just, even if you don't work in the public, but you have to go outside to take care of errands, do grocery shopping, whatever, you have this concern like, oh, this one time I came into contact with somebody, but you know, you're, you're like thinking about this. Um, so regardless of that though, but that is, that is an actual concern for somebody. And you know, if you can get yourself tested, 
you know, at least two or three times, I think, just to be on the safe side if you can. Um, you know, take your precautions and do what you have to do to 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 monitor your health or, or monitor the health of the person that you're worried about. <sighs> Regardless of that, uh, Capricorn, it feels like this, uh, again, like irreversible damage. Like you're afraid of that. You're afraid of things going too far. And again, it could be the whole worry and anxiety over blowing your top of finally hitting a breaking point possibly again for some of you going back to the disarray that you're observing in your physical space you know maybe uh, you know i'm going to use this just just an example and it's not an excuse but this is possibly someone's <coughs> Pardon me, excuse me. This could be, you know, just somebody's reality. It doesn't have to be exactly this because, but whatever. What I'm sensing is maybe um, a parent, uh, whether you're single or married and partnered or whatever your status is, it doesn't matter. And I, and I would assume this is true. I would assume this is something that a lot of people have come to realize about, about their situations. You love your children. <laughs> And I'm, I'm and I'm being you know kind of tongue in cheek when I phrase it this way. You love your children, but you don't like your children, and that's tongue in cheek. I'm not trying to say you you know hate your kids or they're they're you know demon spawn or anything like that. No, it's more of like a in normal circumstances, your children spend seven to ten hours a day out of your house. They're at school, they're at their little after school programs or their or, or their sports practices and things like that. They're they they have their own little little lives and their little schedules, right? Now that many are home or they have been home, or their schedules are now altered and some days they're home, some days they're out, you know, intermingling at school or or whatever other activities they do. There is this awareness that <laughs> I actually. I'm so much some of you might be thinking I'm not a good parent I'm not a parent myself so I don't have this criticism I'm so I'm stating it as if I were you I'm not a good parent I'm afraid that my inabilities to teach my children to tolerate my children to show patient patience compassion and te <laughs> temperament or a tempered even uh, 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 <laughs> disposition with my children is really bothersome to some of you. You are finding your t you you rise to anger more. You feel helpless more. You don't know how to keep them entertained. You don't know. So I I've seen a lot of parents, people I've known and personally, and people that I just see on the news who are just like, I feel really uneducated or 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 uh, incapable of educating my children. Like elementary school. You know, not like high school and stuff like that, which I think would probably still be happening. But I've, I've seen a lot of parents struggle with like trying to get their children to understand basic concepts and basic elementary school level knowledge. Now, you know, that could that could be a personal crisis because maybe philosophically or maybe in your own uh, sense of pride in yourself, you always thought I could not like egotistical. I could teach my children. I could be my, my children's teacher. Maybe some of you have thought of it before. Maybe we should homeschool the kids. But then you thought better of it, and now 2020 is showing you, oh, no. Oh, no, we can't do this. This is, this is beyond our, our, <laughs> our, our skill set, right? So there's something about being, ah, and the irre uh, irreversible damage thing. Some of you are thinking about that and worrying about that in relation to your kids. This year year and a half or however long they've been out of school out of traditional learning you're worried about what they're learning are they retaining the information are they quote unquote becoming smarter right <laughs> is my kid and this generation of children are they going to be long-term affected by this experience of 2020 are they going to be able to properly graduate and and uh, uh move on in their life you know continue to ascend their educational levels or are they going to be held back either technically because they can't graduate or or less technically because they're they're the experience of this year has been such a shit show a lot of concern over that and and several other things so 
Nine of Swords, I think, is is another reason why the King of Wands, whoever it may be, you or somebody else, or the pair of you, you both could be doing this and feeling like you're selling your children short because one person wants to go make cuckoo clocks and the other person is a gym rat and your kids are just like, I don't understand. I don't understand Pythagorean the Pythagorean, I can't even say it. Pythagorean's, right? Pythagorean's theorem, help me. And you're like, I got to go make these cuckoo clocks. And your mommy, she's going off to the gym. So Google it, you know? So, <laughs> so there's like this, I there's this fear that things in your personal life at home and or your, your, your professional life are going to have long-term adverse uh, effects or, or results. Hmm? Now, mm, this is advice. They're letting me know. This is advice, but then this is also something you need to be mindful of. So be mindful and take a little bit of advice from this card. Temperance, Capricorn. This is Major Arcana for Sagittarius. Oh, um, Judgment is secondary major for... Scorpio and sometimes Aries if you want to if you want to plug those signs in here if you know that for a fact No sign is important except the one that I mentioned or except yours Capricorn, but this is also for Sagittarius now uh, Again, this is advice and Something to be mindful of okay equal measures everything in balance everything, you know as Objective as possible bird's eye view as possible. Okay, What's the big picture here, okay? I don't know you personally. I don't know your children or the people you live with personally, but I feel pretty confident that in many of your cases, the long-term effects of what's going on in 2020 can be mended, can be fixed. They can be worked with. I don't sense Really, for those who are worried about their kids, if your child's in fourth grade and maybe they move on to fifth come 2021, um, I don't get the sense that they're going to be missing too much. I feel at some point they're going to be able to make up what they don't know or, or that information, whatever they're lacking, whatever you feel they're lacking, it will be made up. I feel in time, with patience, with proper perspective and effort, not just perspective and effort, they're telling me because of the fire sign element here, again, Sagittarius, with proper effort, these things can be amended. These things can be sort of kind of corrected, right? It doesn't have to be, or at least it won't be as bad as someone is fearing that it will be. Because that's the other thing about the Nine of Swords. It is a fearful card. It's highly anxious. It's uh, it's very much a worry wart type of energy. I think you need to keep that in check or whoever is affected in this way needs to keep that in check. Um, temperance is also giving me this idea of advice because that was more like what you need to keep in mind. Everything in time should find a natural balance, right? So don't, you know, throw the baby out with the bathwater. Don't overthink it. Don't overanalyze it, right? Live in the moment. Take it day by day, step by step, yeah? The advice is is also that. Take it step by step. Don't go overboard with anything, right? Um, and again, keep yourself in check, right? Keep yourself in check. So for the person who knows they need that outlet, maybe that needs to be expressed. Um, maybe that needs to be sort of quantified or, or, or kind of, you know, maybe some truths have to come out about that. Like maybe again, I'm not, I'm not trying to excuse anything because I, I don't want to excuse bad behavior, but I feel someone might not explain their bad behavior. Someone might just, you know, kind of act very impassioned and they might have a sharp reaction or like a, a sharp verbal reaction like when being asked how come you have to do the hobby every day why can't it be just like three or four times a week why is it every day and instead of explaining i think i'm a little concerned about how i'm reacting to the kids or how I'm reacting to how the house looks and, and the mess that's going on, or I'm I'm having a bad reaction to the stress from work, or I'm having a bad reaction to um, us worrying about money, and da 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 da. Instead of saying that, it's more of a, why are you even asking me this? It's like very defensive for some people. So re, re, retool, redirect 
that anger, that defensiveness, that frustration, right? And bring it back to a practical, level-headed, tempered explanation. I have lots of anxiety right now. I'm, I'm, I'm feeling super stressed. I'm feeling very worried about the future and da 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 You know what I mean? Have a higher conversation about it is what that feels like. Outcome, Capricorn, Eight of Hazards, a.k.a. Eight of Pentacles. So kind of what I was just saying, work on it. <laughs> this, this is, I, I don't, I don't think I'm extra familiar. I don't think this card has come out very often when I've used this deck. So I'm a little shocked that this is the illustration for the Eight of Hazards. What does it say here? Do not open. That's interesting. Do not open pressurized ex expansion tank. Okay. I, this this illustration does nothing for me in this moment so if that if that strikes you in some type of way if that means something to you this illustration go to town but I'm just gonna have to go off of what I am intuiting and what I know traditionally of the eight of Pentacles or the eight of hazards in this deck which is hard work and being dedicated to a job being dedicated to a task being focused on a particular um, goal or or outcome. Not in a manipulative sense, not in the you just want to get your way to get your way and you want everybody else to kind of stay out of your way. It's not that. It's more of like a I'm on I'm doing this. I'm crafting because uh, normally on the eight of pentacles, we see someone crafting pentacles. We see someone actually making pentacles. Right. So there is this intention or there is this goal that somebody has, but it might not be readily expressed. Like I was just saying a moment ago with the temperance card, I feel that um Maybe there's just an assumption when there isn't enough expression or, or, or communication, right? An exchanging of, of, of point of views, yeah? Like I was saying earlier about like the, the, the cashier thing. We just assume the cashier is lazy. And I say we. I, I'm not a part of the we, but I'm just saying that. <laughs> I'm saying collectively there's, there's a portion of people who just assume that cashier is being lazy, the cashier is dragging their feet because they don't value your time and they're doing it to, you know, specifically to piss you off or to affect you. And it's just like, no, you don't know what's going on in that person's life. So I feel like Capricorn, in your story, there's a, there's a lack of understanding between two or more sides. And there should be work, effort put in to making those those two ends meet, to, to making those two perspectives come closer together so that they get into a very uh, effective dialogue with one another, right? An understanding between two people or more. Or, and or, I should say, and or, there is this emphasis naturally on work, on on preserving work, perhaps. Maybe that's sort of what this, this, this illustration is kind of giving me a little bit, preservation, like... I don't need, I, I really don't like this card. I, again, I have used this deck a bunch of times, but I don't know that I've ever really seen this card come out or I, I, it's affecting me in such a way. But anyway, preserving work, making sure that we keep things afloat in that area is also important, okay? So maybe someone in some of your cases, maybe this King of Wands has been a little bit, because remember earlier, we had this woman in the bunker and she's fantasizing about an island. Like maybe somebody has been a little bit off in La La Land and they haven't really been focused on work and they've been doing like their hobbies or focused more on those creative outlets more than their job. So they need to temper that, find a balance between that and not neglect the actual physical work of keeping a household afloat. Does that make sense? Okay. Overall energy, six of cups. Interesting. So I feel, again, whoever you're dealing with or whatever situation this is, it is very tender, uh, it is very sensitive, and it's very um, amicable for the most part. I'm sensing many of you, you've gotten along with the people that you live with, family, f family friends, I don't care who it is, um, or the people that you work with, right? But there is this need for like both parties to kind of recognize the value of what they have together, the connection they have as two individual people, or the connection they have between employee and boss, the the connection they have between, you know, being co-parents to, you know, however many children, or the value of the parent relationship to the child relationship. Like, let's talk about, let's, let's recognize 
that there's something good about this connection. There's something that we both, yes, we both bring to the table something of value and both of us need to be, to honor that, to, to, to be respectful of that and to, and to really possibly express how it makes us feel. Now this might sound like really woo woo and this might sound really like, you know, kumbaya or something like that you know take take it with a grain of salt it doesn't have to be you got to sit down and like hold each other's hands and be like so tell me how you're feeling at this very moment i want to hear you i want to hear your heart it doesn't have to be like that but there is this need to recognize it feels like a need to recognize that someone might be perceiving another one's actions as selfish when again what did i say earlier it's self-preservation without doing this i might go off the rails and someone might not know that that is that it, that that is a, someone's personal truth you know not that it was a secret it's just like they're not perceiving it as that in that way like i said before talking about the four of wands you could have two people living in the same space physical space but having two different emotional reactions to what they're observing in their personal space like for me a little bit of clutter not a big deal i can live with a little bit of clutter like like this much clutter this much damage i couldn't do it but a little bit of clutter is okay someone like my sister who i used to live with uh, when we were growing up she can't handle it it's just it drives her nuts i and then you know similar years ago i didn't know that about her i just like why are you in such a grumpy mood? And she would tell me, because this and this and this and this is out of order. And I'd look and I'd be like, it's not even that bad. And I'm like totally unaffected. But she was very affected. That might be a truth that someone doesn't know about the other person and vice versa or whatever. So take all that into consideration, okay? Capricorn, that is your reading for October. If you liked it, the like button is down below. Go ahead and hit that for me. If you want to leave a comment, let me know how this uh, resonated in your life. Please let me know. Uh, if you want to share the video, let other people know you like watching my stuff. Super, super cool. And of course, subscribe to the channel, friends, if you have not subscribed already. That would be the coolest. <laughs> uh, Capricorn, if you want to get a personal reading with me, you can find that information down in the description box below. I'll be back soon to do your mid-October readings. Until then, my friends, I thank you so much for watching. Take care.